It really is crazy to think that no matter how novel a trend or sound of music may be today, it will still inevitably become dated and seem to our descendants as our grandparents' music seems to us right now. But I think when it comes to Lana Del Rey, this is not the case. When listening to Lana, you already get the sense that this music is from an older time. And this is obviously because her music is already inspired by older sounds. But I think Lana's mixing of modern lyrics with vintage styles makes her music especially unique. Instead of strictly sticking to a vintage aesthetic and attempting to imitate it in a one-to-one -one fashion, Lana instead attempts to remix the modern and bygone, not really staying loyal to either one. In this way, it's like she constantly skirts the boundary between fully indie, fully pop, fully alternative, fully hip hop, fully bygone aesthetic, fully modern reality. It's like her music is from a parallel universe where our modern culture, trends, and music exists not in the 2020s, but in something like the 1960s. This creation of something new, but by referencing the past and remixing it with the modern, is something that really fascinates me and that I wanted to talk about in today's video. Now, I am someone who has always loved learning about history and who loves to think what it must be like to live in those times. And sometimes I think this is one of the reasons why I find Lana so captivating. In my opinion, Lana Del Rey is one of the first successful artists to be made completely from an aesthetic and who was manufactured from the bottom up, independent from the influences of current trends. In other words, Lana's style isn't inherently born from the contemporary culture she grew up in, but is a result of her and our current submersion in media and the internet. Lana's persona was created by sifting through this media, finding people, music, and styles that resonate with her, and then recreating herself in that image. Now this point is obviously more of a statement on postmodernism, simulacra, and the complete rejection of the constraints of modernity, but I will save that for my next video. For this one, I wanted to stick primarily to Lana's lyricism, her look, and the novelty of merging the present with the past. Now, one of the first examples of this mixing of the past and present is from Born to Die and the National Anthem music video. This music video, released in 2012, features Lana as both Jackie O and Marilyn Monroe and ASAP Rocky as JFK. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Now this vintage cosplay is a perfect example of not only just postmodernism and referencing the past, but also her way of attempting to modernize the vintage aesthetic. If Lana wanted to fully and authentically lean into this aesthetic, she would have worn the iconic blonde hairstyle that Marilyn was famous for, but more specifically would have obviously cast someone who looked more like JFK. Now this leads me to one of my favorite aspects of Lana and the way she really appreciates black and Latino culture, but through that vintage Americana stylization. Now it's no secret that American culture gets progressively racist the further you go back making many who are non-white feel that they can't appreciate that past. So her decision to admire that style, but by also including historically disadvantaged cultures is refreshing. I talked about this point much more in my first Lana video, but being someone who is mixed race and growing up in South Florida, I was always under the impression that culturally, what is deemed as real, full American tends to be pure Protestant wonder bread. But I see Lana's use of these cultures in her music as a way of reimagining what is American, but in a more inclusive and therefore accurate way. What many people don't understand is that America is not this objective solid thing in the same way that, for example, countries in Europe are, but is built off of an idea that anyone can be a part of, 
but that isn't always accurately represented in our culture. And so again, I appreciate Lana's inclusion in her artistry. Now, probably one of my favorite examples of Lana reimagining the modern in a retro light is her unreleased song, Prom Song Gone Wrong. Now this one, like, 15 second sample, I think perfectly encapsulates Lana's aesthetic. A song that sounds straight out of the era of 1950s doo-wop, but upon closer listen, clearly references modern American culture. This single part of the song was the reason I enjoyed it so much growing up. It's also pretty postmodern in the way that it subverts expectations by including modern alternative or hip-hop references, which to many honestly might go unnoticed or seem insignificant, but again, to me, it's refreshing and inclusive. Lana's ability to immortalize modernity by presenting it in this retro bygone sound is fascinatingly beautiful to me. One of Lana's more experimental albums, Honeymoon, really showcases her desire to combine different sounds, especially strings and trap beats. Songs like Art Deco and High by the Beach feel like otherworldly paradoxes. Beautiful, intense classical strings over modern trap beats feel novel and complement each other in such an unexpected way. These songs become like a beautiful, dreamy dance between the classic and modern, and like much of Lana's music, seem to not really know what they want to be, constantly skirting between different genres, never really committing entirely to one. Again, making it feel all the more unique. One thing I also really enjoyed about this album was that I thought some of the songs, specifically High by the Beach, kind of felt like a full circle maturing of much older unreleased music that she had done from like 2008 to 2010. Some of these songs have such a distinctly late 2000s trip hop sound, but at the same time are still influenced by those dramatic cinematic strings. High by the Beach at times even sounds almost like a Lil Wayne song from like 2008. But those slow dream pop tempos and ethereal vocals still help it to retain that unique individuality. Moving to her more recent work, I think the song Sweet Carolina from Blue Bannisters is probably one of her most well-known examples of having a vintage bygone sound, but with a modern twist. The song sounds cinematic and seasoned, with the piano chords and Lana's songbird-like exclamation echoing the 1950s and Marilyn Monroe. Maybe blues, maybe blues. I wanna be kissed by you alone. Nobody else but you. Like many of Lana's songs, this one feels like it takes you back in time until you are suddenly grounded in the present by the lyrics. After your iPhone 11, crypto forever. It's almost like Lana's songs always keep you on your toes, not really allowing you to fully immerse in a specific sound. Her songs can be so ethereal and cinematic that they feel almost religious until she mentions drugs or guns. Others sound so feminine and dainty, making you feel you know what to expect until she merges it with heavy metal or violent imagery. It is this constant pendulum swing between staying true to an aesthetic and completely subverting it that I think is one of the things that makes her stand out the most. From Taco Truck VB and Lana talking about vaping to fishtail and braiding hair to Ella Fitzgerald to candy necklaces and referencing the Rockefellers alongside 90s hip hop, Lana consistently skirts these boundaries between the past and present, providing us with this immersive experience that is so familiar yet so unique at the same time. Now, one of my all time favorite things that Lana tends to do, but that is a bit more abstract is what I like to call Da Vinciism where she will romanticize and combine things that usually wouldn't be included in the aesthetic that she represents. Now, I call this Da Vinciism not because I think Lana is literally comparable to Da Vinci, 
But because Da Vinci was known as this person who mastered the arts and sciences, being that he was a famed inventor and an artist. In popular culture, these two tend to be presented as conflicting. Like you can only be either left brain, logical, scientific, or right brain, intuitive, and artistic. I've personally always loved science and wished it were more romanticized or just shown in the same light as abstract things like beauty or spirituality. And I love how Lana kind of shows more left brain or traditionally masculine, non-artistic things in a more beautiful way. One of the earliest examples of this is from the beginning of the video game's music video. Just before the video and song starts, we see a city that looks like it was just nuked. And in my opinion, this clip is more like something you'd expect to see in a disaster movie. But including it in such a romantic feminine song completely subverts what you typically expect from an aesthetic like hers. Video Games is a simple ballad that has a somber, almost disappointing sound. And I can maybe imagine that this opening scene represents how this lover was Lana's entire world and now that world has been destroyed. The little boy in me that likes destruction and explosions loves that she starts the video off this way. Another great example of this is from the Bel Air music video where the aesthetic is so vintage Hollywood ethereal glamour until you realize at the end that there are spaceships in the background and strange technological glitches in the video. Lana has a different song where she says life on Mars isn't just a song. Life on Mars ain't just a song. Which I think is a clue that she is maybe interested in UFOs and aliens. Something that is almost never seen in a romantic or artsy light. But Lana somehow in this video seamlessly marries the two together. The thought of extraterrestrial life is such a goldmine of curiosity for me. And every once in a while, I get lost in hours and hours of videos about it. But my interest in UFOs is definitely more logical and rigid compared to, for example, when I'm learning about art history and spiritual experiences. But in Bel Air, I see a merging of these two concepts, a marriage of the sci-fi and spiritual. Most people who choose an aesthetic like Lana would never use these random destructive or alien imagery because it clashes heavily with the image they are going for, but Lana tends to take these creative risks, which to the trained eye make her all the more unique. In the beginning of the Gods and Monsters music video, we see the universe just after the Big Bang and the formation of the first stars and galaxies, but because of Lana's aesthetic, it seems that it now has significance not in a scientific, cosmological way, but in an artistic, mysteriously spiritual way. Another example of this that many people might not even notice is from NFR and the album cover. In the background, we see California on fire. And in the song Heroin from Lust for Life, the lyrics are clearly about climate change. Again, to me, it's just fascinating to have an aesthetic and sound that is so grounded in the past, but also very self-aware and modern. I already made a video about climate change, but that's also something I'm fascinated about. And it's definitely more of a left brain appreciation of the physics and workings of the natural world. But Lana somehow makes it significant, but in a different, beautiful way. As someone who has always had such an appreciation for both the material and spiritual, I see the way Lana incorporates the two as showing that they aren't separate and that there can be and is such beauty and significance in these concepts and not just what we traditionally say can be. I think one of the most fascinating and unique aspects of Lana Del Rey is that even though she is clearly influenced by this manufactured vintage Americana aesthetic, she isn't afraid to enhance and experiment with it. Most people who tend to follow aesthetics treat it almost as a strict dogmatic ideology and can only wear these shirts with these pants, these colors with these shades, or only allow certain items in their home because it's all about sticking to the aesthetic. And I think in a way that makes many people's aesthetics inauthentic 
But Lana isn't afraid to mix and mash things and completely subvert what you'd expect from someone who is influenced by the things that she enjoys. Like I mentioned briefly in the opening, Lana Del Rey is an example of this new breed of celebrity born from access to endless media which has allowed them to sift through thousands and thousands of images, past and present, to individually and personally curate their own unique sense of style or persona. In my next video, I will talk more about this and how, due to postmodernism and metamodernism, we now have the freedom to really construct from scratch our identity and how this has led us to romanticize and add significance to our life, from Lana Del Rey and Ethel Kane to even the influences of Christian and Renaissance art and showing the beauty in the human mundane experience. 